in late March, Cook Island's Prime Minister Mark Brown visited New Zealand. During the visit, he and I agreed we'd work in earnest towards a May commencement of two-way quarantine-free travel between our two countries. So it gives me great pleasure today to be able to announce that on the 17th of May, on the basis that a clear set of criteria is met, this arrangement will come into effect. Long-term residents and critical workers have of course been able to travel quarantine-free from the Cook Islands to New Zealand since January 21. But it has not been until now that we have been satisfied that it is safe for New Zealand to be sending people in the other direction. The health and safety of the people of the Cooks has at all times been paramount for both the leadership in the Cook Islands and here in New Zealand. And a huge amount of work has been going on behind the scenes to ensure the readiness on both sides should uh, we have a set of circumstances that leads to a case being picked up in the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands are in a stronger position to prevent, detect and manage any potential COVID-19 outbreak, which means a two-way travel bubble can now proceed. A green travel zone between the Cooks and New Zealand will allow families to reconnect, commercial arrangements to resume and tourism in the Cooks to kick off once again. This will all provide a boost to the Cook Islands economy and help in the country's recovery from the impacts of COVID-19. Commencement of the bubble will be subject to the normal final checks, including airline and airport readiness, all necessary protocols and frameworks in place, and the final sign-off from the Director General of Health. In many ways, these conditions and the overall arrangement are similar to what we have in place with Australia. And as in the case of Australia, the bubble comes with a flyer beware caveat. If there is an outbreak in New Zealand, flights are likely to be paused. But in addition to that, our plan, if there is an outbreak in the Cooks, is more explicit. Given the size and social settings of the Cooks, a highly precautionary approach would be taken to any outbreak. As outlined in the second of the criteria listed above, we put in place plans for humanitarian support and, if required, the return of travellers to New Zealand. So rather than just asking everyone to shelter in place like we would in Australia, we would be more likely to get our people home. We view this as necessary to reduce pressure on the Cook Islands and minimise further spread of the virus. I would note the vaccination of the Cook Islands population was not considered a precondition for the two-way travel bubble. But in terms of vaccines, New Zealand will be supplying the Cooks with enough Pfizer doses to immunise their entire population. And we do expect the vaccine rollout to commence this month, but there is a bit more work that needs to be done uh, before that's able to be finalised. A travel bubble with the Cooks signifies another milestone in New Zealand's reconnection with the world. Both countries' strong response to COVID has allowed this arrangement, which is unique. It will be hugely significant for many people, and I'd like to once more take the chance to thank every New Zealander for helping make it possible, and of course, everyone in the Cook Islands. We will, over time, look to incrementally extend quarantine-free travel to other countries, as it is safe to do so. But for now, we look forward to the 17th, and to those first quarantine-free flights taking off from New Zealand across the Pacific.